All right, hello, and welcome back to my 2.5D RPG in Unity tutorial. Today is actually the last episode, so we are going to be releasing the assets that will be available on Itch.io for just like a payment of on, uh, what's the word? Bleh. Patreon, that's the one. So you can pledge to me on Patreon, and you can either get it early for the $5 one, or just at the end when they're done for the $1 one. And yeah, so... But for, as for the contents of today's episode, uh, we're just going to be covering a few bugs that were here that needed fixing, so, and serialization of money, because I had not done that last time. So, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so the first bit of, uh, well, a new bit of functionality I've added to the objectives is this new virtual method called refresh objective. Uh, the idea is basically is once you load a new scene, you'll override this, or this will be overridden with, like, uh, the details you need to get whatever objects the uh, objective requires. So, like, I don't know, NPCs that you might have to interact with somehow. And that gets called, and it basically does a check to make sure that if the object is in the scene, it's inside, as it is in assigned to any, like, game object variable that you need. And then you can do whatever you want to it. And if it's null, then you just don't check it because you're not in the right scene. And as for an example... This is used in the objective kill someone, where on refresh objective, we basically try, if the target is null, then we say, all right, target is object ID manager dot me dot get object by ID, passing the target ID. And if the target is still null, so say we couldn't find it in the scene because we're not in the right scene, we don't do anything. Otherwise, we set the objective to kill target dot name, and we set the human stack controller, HSC to be the human stack controller of the target. And this is all called from on level finish loading, where basically once we've got all the uh, data deserialized on loading, uh, we call we go through each of the quest bases in the global quest or me all quests, and then we go through all the objectives in each quest, and we just call this refresh method, and that's pretty much it. Okay, uh, another change I've made uh, is with the world builder of how the so uh, how the bottom left and top right points of the world are calculated, which is used in the uh, in the pathfinding because that's how we work out where we are in the grid and then use that to get nodes for pathfinding and stuff. If you want a uh, more in-depth explanation, there is a uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. there is a video on it called generating. Pathfinding those community tile maps that basically explains how it works. But for now, since uh, the world you use in your game might not be square, I've had to rewrite how these uh, bottom left and top right corners are calculated. So basically, what we do uh, is we call this new method called calculate positions when we're passing in the uh, tile map for pathfinding. Uh, and what we do is we have four values. So low x and low y, so these would be the, that would be the bottom left corner, and high x and high y would be top and the top right corner. And what we do is we go through each of the pathfinding nodes. If a node is null, so if, like, say, your area wasn't perfectly square, then there'll be, like, null spaces in the array, which get ignored. Well, because they can't create a uh, node there, because there's no floor. But if there is a node there, it will basically check its transform dot position uh, x and y against the low and high x and y's, and if it is lower or higher applicably, then it will set the value. And finally, once we've gone through all the nodes, we set the bottom left corner to be the low x and low y, and the top right corner to be the high x and high y, and that allows us to use uh, non-square shaped levels if you can sort of get it. So, yeah. I've also changed how uh, on the action roadmap, which is just an NPC action to make the uh, NPC move to random points. Uh, basically, what it does is it will just basically try and find a random uh, tile, or not tile, uh, pathfinding node in the world by using a random dot range of the world size for the X and Y coordinates. And basically what we do here is if the node is null, so if it was a non-valid point in the path it just returns uh, it calls itself again recursively and eventually it will find a pathfinding node to go to else it just returns to go to if it has found a node 
and tonight is used here when we're finding the path for the first time. And here when we have reached the end of the current path. And yeah. I've also uh, rewritten how neighbors are decided for nodes. So on uh, basically on our get neighbors method in create nodes from tile maps, uh, it's, we just basically go through all the nodes. And if the node is null, we continue. Otherwise, if it's within 1.2 units of the node, then we add the node to the neighbors list. Uh, I was doing this because for some reason, well, basically when we have a non-square shaped level and there's like gaps in between with null nodes, sometimes it would add nodes that were too far away that weren't really connected to it for some reason. So this way, it just basically makes sure that uh, all the nodes are actual neighbors of each other rather than just across the map. So yeah. And finally, now we're on to the uh, money serialization. So first off, uh, in the money control script, which is just a script that's added to like NPCs and the player and whatnot, and anything that needs to store its money. Uh, basically, we have a new method called get money value, which returns the object's ID, a semicolon, and the money value. And next up in the serialization controller, we have a reference to our new money serializer here, which we assign in awake here. And on file initialize, we have a new one for id scene store plus slash plus money store dot txt. I remember we used the dispose as well to stop access errors. Uh, we don't need the, uh, an individual file for each of the uh, each of the scenes, so we just store it without the uh, current scene directory because you know your money. Uh, I don't know. It just, it's just easier to store it in uh, one file and then reference that every time we load rather than have multiple files in multiple different scenes. So yeah. Uh, and then like pretty much all the other serialized data we have, uh, we call array and we write the lines to a file using our load controller method that we wrote last time. And again, in serialized data, it's pretty much the same. Just write into ID scene store plus slash plus money store dot txt with the money data, which is got from the money serializer. And again, money data is equal to low controller dot read lines from file, ID scene store plus slash plus money store dot txt. And you get the idea. It's the same as every other bit of serialization, except we use just a hard coded value rather than a variable. Okay, where's the last bit? Uh, yes, and we can call money series dot deserialize money from uh, money data. And finally, for the actual money serializer itself, uh, so we have a list of strings, which is just the money data, which is where it's stored, and then the serialization controller uses that to write it to a file. Uh, then we have two more string lists for IDs and money values. Uh, this is when we are deserializing or reading through the uh, money data list and we split them into two separate arrays. So we can have the ID of, ID of the object and it, the amount of money it has separately. Uh, so what we do on serialized money is we set initialize these IDs and money values to two separate lists. Then data is just us reading in the uh, money value through file from the file. So in this case, we're going to our documents folder, the game directory, save directory, and it should be money store.txt. Then we go through each of these strings in data and we split the string using the semicolon, but we have a shortcut to that with serialization controller.me.split. And then we add the first element of that array, which would be the ID of the object to IDs and money values gets the second element of the array, which is the money value as a string. Next up, uh, we get the money controller. We find all the money controllers in the scene. And then we have a string called retval, which is because, uh, because every, I originally intended to return a string, but doing it all in a void is just as effective, I guess. So I can actually refactor that now. Uh, rename 
temp or something. So what we're doing is just temporary store for the string. Uh, for each money val money controller that we found in the scene, we get the object ID off the objects that the money controller was on, and we check it against our list of IDs that we found in the file. So if if we do find a file, so say if it was the player going between scenes and they got more money in one scene, and then you know, then we only we want to do is update the money value of the player. Uh, at the index, and we get the index of that value by finding it in IDs, or using the IDs and calling index of, and passing in the ID. And then we just add in the mon .money value to string. If we don't have, uh, if we can't find the ID, then we assume that this is a new person or entity that we haven't encountered in the game before. So we need to create a new entry for it. And we just add mon dot get value to our new list called temp. And remember, mon dot get money value returns the object ID as well as the money value. Uh, money serializer. And then finally, we go through all the IDs in, uh, and we add to temp uh, IDs x plus semicolon plus money values x. So that will basically take all our existing ones, whether they've been updated or not. Add them to this new list temp in the correct format so we can deserialize them and reserialize them and redraw them and all that. And finally, we just assign uh, temp to be, uh, or money data is set to be temp. And that's it. And likewise, for deserialize money, uh, we get passed in a string of values. And string array of data is equal to string.split with the semicolon which we use the shortcut for again. And likewise, since the ID is element zero of that array and the money value is element one, well, two or one, it always messes with me starting with index of zero, but whatever. So yeah. So we get the object that the money has been assigned to by passing in data zero, which is the ID. And if the object is null, so for some reason we can't find that ID or we've written it wrong or whatever, and we just don't do anything. Otherwise, we get the money controller off that object that we found, and we set the money value to be integer.parse uh, with the second element of the array. And that's pretty much it for our RPG tutorial. Uh, so what have we got covered? So we've got like a uh, movie about the world, pathfinding, Conversations, quests, items, combat, a way to make NPCs perform actions. I think I said quests and conversations. Uh, we've got trading. We've got loads of serialization bollocks. So that's all good fun. So, yeah. Uh, so, you'll be able to get this on Patreon for a $1 pledge. Uh, it'll also be on itch.io for £1.50. Uh, I'm not sure of the current conversion at the rate, but it'll be about two dollars, maybe just over. If you go on it here, so it's cheaper to go to Patreon and support me there. Uh, where else? And yeah, uh, I'll be doing a video next week to let you decide my uh, next project because I've got a couple of ideas, and I thought I'd let you guys choose because you know that'd be fun. And yeah, so cheers for watching and goodbye.